that I got here. So you're not cats then, said the Monkey King. We don't know that, said Spat. No, said Dooby, but I believe her. So you don't belong to any of the tribes? No, said Zoe. Well, you do now, said Dooby. As of now, you're an eel. We could do with someone as smart as you. Smart, said Spat. Yes, Spat, smart. Smarter than you, anyway. Get all this, get all this way in that thing. She's got brains, which are in short supply around here. So what, said Spat. He stared straight at Zoe. No one else has joined us before, have they? You always said it was dangerous. Why don't we just do like we did with everyone else who's come snooping? You said, don't tell me what I said, Spat. Zoe saw Munchkin take a couple of steps away from the other two, automatically. Yeah, but Dewey, we always do, don't we? You said so. I said shut it. Dewey snapped at Spat. There was an uneasy silence for a while. Spat seemed to realise he pushed it and shrugged his shoulders. Zoe saw the anger slip off Dewey's face. Thank you, Spat. Anyway, you're not afraid of a girl, are you? Munchkin sniggered. Obviously pleased himself, Dooby turned back to Zoe. So, you're an eel now, Zoe. So you're an eel now, Zoe. But I don't... I said you're an eel. No arguments. Unless you'd like to give the water a try without your boat. Zoe shook her head slowly. She was too tired and hungry to argue anyway. She didn't even have the energy to wonder what sort of weird setup she had walked into. Let's go back to the base then, lads. They walked up the soggy hill to where the ruins of old stone walls appeared from the sea and led to the cathedral gates. Rising out of the water beside one of these old walls was a row of white posts. They made their way in and around bits of fallen masonry and then, not long after, the main doors to the cathedral was in front of them. It looked out across a large patch of muddy grass in one corner of which stood an ancient cannon. Two boys stood guard in the gateway. Past them was a long porch which led to the doors themselves. These had been reinforced with bands of metal and beams of wood. The two gatekeepers nodded at Dooby, meekly, though they were much bigger than him. All right, Dooby, said one. The other nodded. Neither smiled. One of them shoved hard and the door to the cathedral swung open. Well, Zoe, said Dooby, welcome to hell. Zoe had seen some unpleasant sights before, but nothing in Norwich was like this. Once more she began to wonder if she'd done the right thing in leaving at all. Huddled in small groups around smoking fires with the scraps of people, their clothes were hardly more than rags and were obviously the result of some fairly primitive sewing skills. Dooby and his two thugs were dressed like kings compared with the others in the cathedral. Zoe looked at her own clothes. She'd mended and, pa and patched them countless times, but they seemed almost new now. Once inside, Dooby turned to Spat and Munchkin. You've got things to do, he said, and they both went off into the gloom. Zoe and Dooby walked up the aisle in the centre of the cathedral. Zoe couldn't help staring. She stared at the building that had once been magnificent. The floor was thick with dirt and heaps of rubbish. There were broken windows and broken furniture. It was a mess. Then Zoe stared at the people who were living in it. They were in just as bad a state as the building. So far, she'd only seen children, many of them younger than herself. Aren't there any grown-ups here? Zoe asked. She felt it was the right thing to ask, though she didn't know why. It had been a long time since she'd had any help. Dooby didn't answer. Some of the people eyed Zoe suspiciously as Dooby walked her up the aisle, but most just ignored her. They looked un underfed and wild. The smoke from all their fires drifted away up above in the vault to the ceiling. Dooby was right. There was something infernal about the place, and it stank. The worst thing about it was the smell of rotten fish. Where do you grow your food? Zoe asked, turning to Dooby. Dooby laughed. Grow? We don't grow food. But what do you eat? On Norwich, we had a few animals to breed from, and then there were the allotments. There's nowhere to grow food. And there's no food to feed animals, even if we had any. The island is only a mile long and half as wide. There's no space. It's all buildings and ruins of buildings. There's no room for animals. And anyway, you'd need two of things to breed, right? Two of every sort of thing? Well, we never have two of anything here. There's not enough to go around as it is, without looking after animals too. Then, as if he'd been saying things he shouldn't, Dooby added loudly, but this is the best and biggest bit of land left in Udan Adan, and we're going to keep it. He nodded at one or two people who might have heard him. What's Udan? Zoe began. Udan Adan, the sea. I thought you were supposed to be clever. If you're not, then I don't... Oh no, said Zoe quickly. It's just we called it something different in Norwich. I meant, why'd you call it that? Dooby stopped, as if puzzled. Sitting in his own in the dark was a thin, wrinkled figure. He was talking to himself. See that man? 
He's called William. He's older than anyone else here. He says the sea is called Udanadan Sea. William was the first adult Zoe had ever seen. Is he in charge? Doobie swore loudly. William, he laughed. William, in charge? Then he stopped laughing and grabbed Zoe's arm roughly. Listen to me, Zoe. I'm in charge here. Got it. He stared at Zoe, peering at her dark hair and eyes, her long oval face. He was obviously trying to scare her, and Zoe was scared. But she said, you hurt my arm. She glared back at him, trying not to show her fear, but she felt her mouth quiver. Doobie waited a moment longer, then let her go. Aren't there any grown-ups here at all, apart from William? None that can tie their own shoelaces without worrying about it first, Doobie said, chuckling. Weak in the head, see? But even if there were some with a bit more brains, I'd still be in charge. Zoe didn't doubt this. There was something about Doobie that made you do what he said. Something more than just his use of violence. Zoe nodded at William, the old man in the corner. Does he know why this is happening? Why what is happening? Why the sea keeps on rising year, year after year? Where it comes from? If it will stop before there's nothing left? No one knows that, said Doobie. William will tell you he does, but don't believe everything he says. He's mad. Doobie laughed. They walked on through the cathedral until they reached the choir stalls. They were alone now. In Norwich, some of them said it wasn't the sea rising, but the land sinking. Doesn't make much difference, does it? All I know is that for longer than I can remember, there's been the sea coming to get us, and it's left us like this, like rats on a sinking ship. But I'm not going to let it happen to me. Get some rest. Munchkin's getting some food for you. Find yourself somewhere to sleep later on, because I want your help.